Hello viewers and welcome to this episode of the musical journey in Melody Makers. Today we have amongst us in our studio, Torali Sharma, who just like her name has proved to be a sparkling star in the illuminating cultural scenario of Northeast. At a time when folk and traditional music was witnessing a sharp decline of interest amongst the general public with the onslaught of Bollywood and Western numbers. Torali Sharma spearheaded the process of revival of the old art form Borgit, created by Srimanta Shankar Dev and Madhav Dev with her impeccable and mesmerizing style. So without any further delay, let's get into conversation with this national award winning singer, composer and music director from Assam. I welcome you to the show. Thank you. So with a total <coughs> musical upbringing right. and considering the fact that your father Shri Prabhat Sharma is an exponent of folk music <coughs> in Assam. Hmm. So, how has it paved the way in transforming you as a complete artist? Uh, see, uh, music was always there because when I was young, when I was a child, I heard my father playing the flute. I heard him uh, doing various studies on this uh, folk uh, form of music of Assam. So, unknowingly, that love for music just started yeah yeah it it, uh, it just started i started loving uh, to sing i started love uh, loving uh, to play to play the harmonium mm. i started composing so it was a uh, spontaneous process when i started and then i uh, i realized later that i was actually in love with music because yeah. that was that atmosphere uh, i i was always with oh, so i, you I always to say that you had a <coughs> <coughs> cultural atmosphere at home. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, see, my father, my uncle, everybody, they are all mm -hmm. into music. So whenever we had a con conversations or whenever there was any f festival at home, music was always um, a, a part a, of yeah, your life. Right, up front. So that's how we started. So that's how I, that's how I started, and uh, I'm still with it today. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. So when did you think? When did this <coughs> thought of turning your passion for music into a profession come into you? See, when I started music, it was a passion. It okay. was kind of a hobby because I loved singing, I loved composing and all. But uh, but uh, taking it up as a profession was never a plan. So I did regular studies like anybody, like you or anybody else. But music always stayed with me. So I started singing here and I started singing there. So that's how I landed up in, uh, uh, in the recording studios. I started singing uh, this chorus, no? Okay. Like this, uh, they had a small chorus portions in the mm -hmm. songs. So I was a chorus artist in the okay. beginning <laughs> because I didn't have a name, so I was new. So and uh, whenever in school and colleges there used to be any functions and all, I used to sing. So that's how this whole thing developed. Okay. So taking a uh, vocational training, professional training, mm -hmm. that came much later. But then I did that because I think uh, taking a training in Indian classical music is very important. Okay. And also my father wanted that, my parents wanted that. Mm -hmm. So I took that uh, training and slowly, slowly I started singing. Mm -hmm. But I think the main uh, main beginning as a professional uh, thing came on when I was in Handik uh, okay. and uh, I joined there in the college week mm -hmm. and I was the best singer. So when I was a best singer, uh, people in Gohati who worked with music, especially in the studio, the music directors, they heard about me. But at that point of time, they didn't know that I, my, my father was Prabhat Sharma. So they used to call me to sing the small, small chorus portions here and there. So that's how I started as a chorus, a chorus okay. artist. But then I was paid for that. Mm -hmm. So that 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 thing just became it just came so and slowly, you slowly you inspired <coughs> by such kind of experiences, and that paved the way for yeah, you. that paved the way uh, in a way that really paved the way. And uh, uh, but la, but then okay, I, like I said, something that you have I heard that you have composed music for All India Radio when you were just a kid of twelve years. Right. So what inspired you to I mean carry forward? Actually, see, there was this pro um, program in AIR. It was called Simonia Sora. Mm. So, in Simonia Sora, you have uh, school-going children uh, performing and all. So, one of my uncle, he was a disciple of my father, Jawahari Das. So, he came and told father, the why, uh, why don't you give your daughter there? Then my father was like always, no, 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 she has to learn now. Just keep that thing aside for her. But then he took me one day for a recording, and then I passed there. Then after that, uh, I got the uh, agreement, so I had to go and sing a song. So my father, I just told my father I need to sing. So he actually brought a lyric from one of his friends who is an approved uh, lyricist of AIR. Okay. 
and then my father said that because he was always busy with music and with assignments he didn't have time for me um, I mean musically so he just told me that this is the song you tune it and you go and sing there and I because my father said that I had to make a tune for that I actually composed the tune okay, okay. so whole day I composed the tune and my father said that when he comes back uh, back from office he will hear to what I made and then he will make some corrections but then that didn't happen because he was always busy so when I went to the studio and very uh, I think this is one of the most uh, what do you call rarest moment mm. and I still cherish it actually my father was also working in AIR, oh, so he I was see. a staff artist. Okay. So when I sang my first song in front of the microphone, that was my first song, my first composition. When I sang that, my father was there as an accompanist. Okay, he played the flute, and all the prominent musicians of Assam at that time, that was I think around 1988 or 89. Mm. So Patra Pratim Soduri was uh, in accordion. Then uh, Puspa Bora, he was in tabla. Haider okay. uh, Ali, he was in guitar. All these are prominent musicians. Yes. So they were all there, and I was just a kid, and I was singing my own compositions, and they were playing. Oh. So that I think, uh, unknowingly, maybe subconsciously, that thing stayed with me. That That's composing, yeah, yeah. It so gave you the confidence. To yeah, carry confidence forward. that maybe I, I should, or you know, that thing stayed with me. Composition and singing. Okay. So that love, maybe. It stayed uh -huh. and uh, it finally this whole thing became really a Really noteworthy of a kid of 12 years. <coughs> Seriously. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So now we really understand that music is was always there in your genes. But then how did this thing of uh, turning into music composer come to you? See, uh, like I told you, nothing was really planned. So uh, I was singing as usual. I was uh, doing the chorus things and all. Then suddenly I got offers uh, for um, singing assignments. I started singing here and there. And uh, then uh, there was actually a turning point. One uh, Borgit that, that I sang for mm -hmm. a serial, Asmi's uh, TV serial, that became a hit. It was a Borgit, it was called Pawe Puri Huri, that, that became a hit and after that I got offers from uh, banners, you know, they have this like you have T series and HMP. So we have our own local banners, mm -hmm. Saraswati Communications and Wave and RMC. Mm -hmm. So those banners, uh, they came to me offering, uh, you know, like uh, total album that you have to sing, we are going to produce an album and something like that. But then I re rejected all of them, but then I said yes to one particular um, uh, banner and it was called Saraswati Communications. So I started singing there. So f initially first three, four albums where they had dif uh, different music directors and all. But in one uh, particular music album, they suggested that si since you all uh, also compose, and why don't you compose your own songs? You write your own songs and do your own music. I took it up as a challenge, was okay, and that was, uh, that was a really nice uh, thing. So that's how it started okay. and already I started composing when I was very young. So when I, whenever some tune used to come, I just to put some lyric and all. Mm. So uh, that's how I started. So my first professional album, uh, uh, complete uh, complete album as a music director was uh, that, that told you, mm. it was called Tumar Mor Mor Kun. So that started and after that I also used to, I, I started getting offers for music directors mm -hmm. as well. So how so easy or difficult <coughs> is the job of a music director? So it is easy and it is also very difficult. Yeah. Easy in the sense is because you are already in the line that you love. So mm -hmm. you, you love to create. So in a way it is easy mm -hmm. because you love creating. And the tough because uh, when you are creating music, when you are composing music, you always have, if it is for a film, you always have a story. So you have to do music according to the story. You cannot do something that is the very different. You cannot do your own kind of thing, right? True. You have a liberty in composition, but that has to be in line absolutely with the story. Mm. So that in a way is difficult, but then, then again, uh, it is a big challenge and I love it. And everything has their own. See, film music is very different. Composing for film is very different, different from uh, composing for a documentary. Composing for a private album is very different. So all these are very different, different spheres, and all all of them are very challenging. Mm. But then, like I said, since I like it, mm. maybe things are easier. Okay. I yeah. See. Okay. Now, uh, talking about uh, going professionally, how mm. has been your journey like after <coughs> marriage? Now that you have established yourself in life. 
uh, nothing really very different actually because I was working then I am working still now uh, I mean it is a uh, and especially because my husband is also from the same film he is a sound designer and a sound recordist so mm -hmm. he also he is into the technical side of music so and also my so I guess that helps you in fact yeah that really helps me so some sometimes it really helps me a lot because when I compose a song technically what sound I need mm -hmm. if I tell him he understands. So he corrects you so, technically. Right, right. And also since my, uh, since my husband is into sound recorders and, uh, and also my brother-in-laws they are all into this line. Mm -hmm. So my in-laws are familiar with the whole thing. So it was easier for me and they accepted me as I am. Uh -huh. So I tried to balance between family and music mm -hmm. and things are going on well. Maybe I think I maybe I should say I am lucky. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Now talking <coughs> about stage performance and recording, so which right. one do you prefer? Very honestly, I love recordings. Oh, I see. <laughs> That's because when you are in a recording, you are... You can take... You you can carry I, I, I can your take my liberty, I can take my liberty, I can sing, I can stop, you know, I can feel and, you know, do whatever. But then again, stay, stays has its own charm because you are performing in front of so many people. Mm. Sure. So you have to know their pearls. So both in a way are beautiful and I love both. But mm -hmm. personally I have obviously prefer because then I have my liberty to do my own thing. But then in stage again it has like I told you it has its own charm to be singing in front of so many people to understand their pearls, pearls and then their, yeah, mentality also. their mentality. So sometimes it happens that I see I take this kind of songs and but then I am in stage, I sing the first song and I understand, okay, these people are not going to prefer that. Mm. So I have to sing that on spot. So those things are very beautiful, yeah. very nice. And also in stage, you know, if we, if if you go a little this tune also sometimes it really doesn't matter because your whole perf performance counts. Of course, you cannot be completely yeah. Besura, but then, <laughs> but then if you slightly, if you do, if you miss something, it's absolutely okay. If you are beautiful totality, I mean in totality. Absolutely yeah, perfect. Yeah, absolutely perfect. But then uh, when you are in studio, mm. you have to note that you have to be perfect. Mm, because that will stay for maturity and mm -hmm. you know, stay, things like that. So we see that your <coughs> prize moments of glory came in 2004 when you won the Rajat Kamal National Award for Akahitor, Akah, Akahi, uh, Akahitor, 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 Right, yeah. right. So what was the feeling like? Out moment? of the world. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Getting the oh, yes. uh, award from the President of India. Right. Yeah. That was a. Uh, I don't know. I. I. I think I must always thank God for that, because when you are working, every artist has this dream of uh, really. Uh, it could Being be an award. Like right. It could be an award. It could be the Apollo's of uh, audience, and that uh, was a moment I will always cherish, and especially because uh, my director, my producer, my director Manju Bora my producer Sangeeta Tamuli and my well wishers when they were the people who always supported me they were the people who thought that okay uh, this is a big film and Tarali can do the music mm -hmm. so that thought that you know Tarali can compose music for this film that thought you know mm -hmm. that belief I was uh, I actually I am still very grateful and I think I'll be grateful to them my whole life for for that thing and uh, winning the award was also like a kind of uh, uh, confidence boosting because then you were Mm, you were like, okay, I need to work more hard. So I, it's just not one thing. So many things together, together came combined. into my mind when I won the mm. award. I think at this point of time, we'll listen to a song by you. So which song are you going to present before our audience now? But yes, I would like to sing a song. It's a cute little song. It's about a girl in a village. So it's a very simple girl, very cute girl. And she, uh, she sees a boy you know, taking the cows to the field early in the morning. So she actually, you know, uh, just just uh, makes a uh, observation and then she sings. So it's a very cute little song about the cows and the field and the boy who takes the cows.
as the face of folk music in Assam. So, what do you see in the present scenario? How far is it being appreciated by people? And also, how far do you <coughs> see its future? See, folk in Assam is hugely appreciated as far as Bihu is concerned. Okay. Okay. Our Bihu songs are like, I mean, if when I am in stage, when I am singing in stage, I understand. And I think all artists, every artist who is an Assamese artist will understand what I am talking about and even the audience. Yeah. Because when you are singing Bihu, like, there is nothing, there is no is. stuff, it's like Bhangra, you start mm -hmm. being and then everything is like comes to a standstill mm -hmm. and people are like enjoying and all. Yes. So that in a way is absolutely very, very, very positive. Mm -hmm. But then our, I, I personally feel that, uh, we, because see our whole folk thing in, in, in Assam, we have so many different genres of folk. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, there is Bihu, there is Kamrupi Lukoge, there is Gwalporia Lukoge, mm. there is Biana, Menaina, Mentokarian, I don't know what not, Ujapel and everything. And all of these uh, different forms has their own charm and beauty. beauty. Okay, but then the way Bihu is appreciated, you cannot say the same of Ojapali, Ojapali maybe. Exactly. Ojapali is appreciated but then only in one particular uh, district or in, in, a, in, a, yeah, yeah, in an area. Uh, what I personally feel is that we Assamese, Assamese people, by nature have this folk thing inside us okay, okay. in whatever area uh, place you stay you, you, you might be staying here or there but then you, we have this folk mm. thing inside us inside and we also love only thing is that uh, the new generation it's so much MTV now I mean and this whole MTV generation so and uh, students studying outside students getting access to a larger world because the world is becoming very smaller day by day so you can do anything in internet you can do anything so in that uh, in that respect I personally feel that maybe uh, this younger generation to some extent uh, has a little bit of less I, I don't say total okay. in, 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 in totality folk form. yeah maybe a little bit of less kind of thing mm, uh, but then I'm sure they love it only because they, they're not exposed to the beauty of the whole mm. folk thing of this yes. region maybe uh, uh, maybe we should consciously make an effort mm. to really make this younger generation love our music mm. and that can be only uh, that can only be possible when they hear this yes, those things absolutely. you have to instill right. that into them I guess. right yes. right so absolutely. that is one point where I feel that uh, we all need to work very hard yeah we have uh, <coughs> Bahundara was a, a feature film where right. you worked totally with the music field out there right, right so besides that film also talking talk about that film also and what are your present and your future pro projects that are going on uh, well at present I'm doing the music for a documentary by Manjubara it's on Brahmaputra mm. so that is already there and also I'm working on a project of Asmi's modern songs uh, it's a big album uh, by lyricist Dilibara and uh, I'm composing the songs and doing the music and I also have my own personal uh, album uh, for which I need to compose. Actually, I am so much caught up with these projects and also there is uh, this mobile theatre, Kohinoor, coming up. So I also have to go and okay. do music for that. So for it's so I think in November. you involved with theatre projects. Right, right, with theatre projects. So this till November, a little bit of uh, working for uh, mm. different projects from outside. Then in November I start my own project. Okay, I see. Yeah. We have also heard a lot about you as an as a philanthropist. Mm -hmm. You have been associated with Snehalaya also, and you right. have uh, brought out two albums, Sneha right. and Puhar also. Mm -hmm. So what inspired you to get into such kind of humanitarian causes? See, see every day, every day in the morning when I take up the paper and read, there is always a shiver that comes. Mm -hmm. I think it happens to all normal citizens, you know, yeah. because they are concerned to me, you know. So this thing of helping is always there yeah. and also because I was convent educated that yeah. that thing was uh, instilled in you right from childhood I guess. right so that was always in my mind but then you are since you were busy working since you were in the studio most of the time or doing shows and tours and all this thing sometimes gets to be you know it gets sidelined okay but then luckily uh, I knew a father father uh, Lucas okay who used to be there uh, in Don Bosco when I was studying in Holy Child in school yeah. So he has this organization and it's called Snehalaya. Yes. So he one uh, he one day actually invited me to Snehalaya. Just like that, he just come over. I have this organization and I, we, we are making a building and all that. So you just come and see. Okay. So when I went there, it was like I you went. Really I got inspired. Yeah. Like this. When I went there, I didn't go with any concept. I just I just went because father was just uh, inviting me. Mm. 
So I just went there just like that. When I went, when, when I went there and when I saw the kids, then I asked Father when he was telling me the history, he was saying that these, these are all street children. Mm -hmm. They don't have any place to stay. These are people, these are children who have been lost. There are children uh, who have seen their parents dying in front of them whole horrible and horror stories and you know stuff like that and he was so telling you, me so you mean to say that you really such kind of incidents happening everything really instilled a thought in you yeah in i was like to work for such kind right, of right that's exactly but i i the, at that point of time i i didn't say anything to father but i was i was having i wanted to do something now i wanted to just do something again has to so many different things wanted to do something if i have money then i just give them money okay, okay. work Mm. But then that is not all. Giving money is just not all. You need yeah. to do something, something. permanently. So okay. I was thinking what to do. Then father told me, you do two albums first. Yes. Just begin, begin with doing two albums. Okay. So whatever money we get from sales, so we will use it for them. Mm. You have been helping. Right. So that's how I started. Okay. That's how I d uh, did those two albums. And uh, whatever money okay. we got, we uh, that went into for that. We didn't take any money. I didn't take any remuneration for making those albums. Uh -huh. Then after that, I did a big show. I did a show in Guwahati. Uh, I uh, this all all the artists and all the musicians from Assam. We uh, they all collaborated with me. So it, it was a night. It was a trolley show. So you have really been taking up right. uh, works involved, right. <coughs> involving in works where you have been really helping the needy people. Right. So yes. in see we word appreciate Right. We course. all have our own. Uh, we ho we all have our own sadness. We all have our own problems. You know. But then if we if we really go out and help even one small child, you know, even one if even if we do one small good deed, no, mm. that helps us. Yes. It makes us. And it creates a great difference in the society too. Right. So, Taraliba, which song are you going to present before our audience right now? Uh, this is a romantic song. Uh, the boy actually uh, says, the, uh, tells the girl, you know, like you are up there, you are like a star, and I am so high. And then there's uh, the girl says that you know what, you look into your own own heart, and then you'll see that I am there. Okay. So I this see. is the uh, I sing this. So song. let's enjoy this song right now. Okay.
So finally, coming to the end of this episode, I would like to thank you for mesmerizing our audience with the wonderful melody of your voice. And also thank you I've, so much. Yes, and also I wish you all the best for all your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank so you so viewers, much. So viewers, with this, we come to the end of this episode of Melody Makers. I hope you really enjoyed the show. But we'll be back again next week with another episode of our musical journey. Until then, take care and it's goodbye from us. Jeeli ke jeeti